Hello, welcome to Cinema Savvy, and it has been a big day in the DC world, especially to do with the films. We've had various trailers coming out of DC Fandom, and was later today, uh, because the, hopefully these trailers will be up, these trailer reactions and uh, discussions and everything will be up before we do our live stream later on today for the DC Fandom, where we talk about all of the news that came out for it. I wanted to do some separate videos where it's just sort of like me talking to the camera and just voicing all of my opinions and everything, my thoughts, uh, maybe some reactions along the way too. This won't be a reaction video, however, and as you can see from the title, this is going to be a very special video. It's not every day that a Batman film comes out, although it's increasingly more so nowadays. Uh, this is the new first glimpse, first look, first trailer. Um, I know we have that little teaser trailer that came out, but the first full-length trailer that's come out for Matt Reeves' take on The Batman. And it's now called The Batman, that's the official title, uh, and the logo looks so good. This is gonna be pre-edited, so I will have various pictures and I will be cutting to the videos from the trailer as I go through my thoughts and my uh, sort of analysis and what I've picked up from the trailer and my initial thoughts, but I wanted to get them all out there. So, I mean, everyone seems to have seen the trailer at the moment. I, I felt really bad for not holding back and actually getting a full reaction out for you guys, but come on. Batman. It's my favorite character. I was watching the stream last night and I couldn't click off when the trailer came on. So um, you've all seen it by now, probably. So be sure to comment along and um, when this video goes live, obviously, and, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the Batman. Are you enjoying the look of this film? Uh, do you think it's a good direction to take the character, the look, the feel of it, the villains, characters, performances, anything related to this? Uh, please do let me know your thoughts and let's get a discussion going in the comments down below. Uh, best way to find us as well. We are going to be covering a lot of this DC fandom stuff across today, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it in the future as well. You can find us on Facebook at Cinema Savvy. You can find us on Twitter at Cinema underscore Savvy, uh, Instagram at Cinema underscore Savvy as well. And we actually do have T-shirts now. Uh, link to that. Uh, the Tee Public link is in the description down below. So feel free to check that out too. We've got a lot to discuss with this thing. And the Batman, as I've mentioned before, is my favorite character in fictional history. And I find his the on-screen performances of Batman across the ages, all the different iterations and variations, really, really fascinating. And you can sort of like plot that history of the character. But ever since this was announced that this was going to be a trilogy and Matt Reeves was directing it, I was completely on board from day one. Uh, Matt Reeves directed, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, the final two entries in the uh, Planet of the Ape, the recent Planet of the Apes reboot franchise, the trilogy, uh, specifically Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes, two films that I absolutely loved and I loved what they managed to do with that trilogy um, in terms of revitalizing it, giving it a new edge, but still paying homage and respecting the, the source material and the, you know, like the original Planet of the Apes when that came came out. But Matt Reeves always struck me as a director that understands its characters, understands the world that he's working in, and, you know, still has spectacle and everything like that, but very much keeps it to a character-focused story. And that's really what I've wanted from the Batman for a long time. And it looks like we're getting it from this trailer. It absolutely does. So first off, we need to talk about the man himself, uh, Robert Pattinson. He is going to be our new Bruce Wayne slash Batman. And in a kind of DC tradition, especially with Batman, um, there was massive outcry when he was cast as Batman and not in a good way. It was very, very negative. It was the, the thing that I've seen the most was, oh, the guy from Twilight, we're going to have a sparkling Batman and whatever. And people fail to realize that Robert Pattinson has done a lot of work since Twilight. He's made a lot of films. Uh, fairly recently, probably the most recent film that I've seen him in myself was um, The Lighthouse. And I thought he was incredible in that. He performed, you know, very well with Willem Dafoe, very good psychological thriller uh, slash horror and really showed like a character breaking apart the seams. What I'm trying to say is that the guy has done a lot and he's an actor. You know, it's just just because an actor plays one role doesn't mean they, they're typecast and can't perform outside of that role. Some actors are like that. Robert Pattinson isn't one of those. So I'm always of the like and mind cast whoever you want as Batman. And I will reserve judgment until, you know, pictures come out, videos come out. And more importantly, you know, like with trailers that we've got today where we actually get to see him play the character, what he looks like on screen, how he looks in the costume, the voice is a big thing, obviously, with Batman. We'll be talking about that, too. And, yeah, everything everything from this trailer has, you know, I've always been in his corner. I was always like, you know, like, give the guy a shot. And this looks like an incredible take on the Batman character. Uh, Matt Reeves has said that this is going to be set in Batman's second year of operating Gotham. 
And uh, I was watching the live stream last night and just watching Matt Reeves talk about this whole project and this film was absolutely fascinating. Um, he's a guy, as I mentioned, with like Planet of the Apes. He knows he's a fan. He knows the character. He knows what's required, you know, from a filmic perspective, but also honoring the comic book and being relevant in audiences eyes as well. He talked to, he said a lot. One of like the main lines that he kept saying was he wanted it to feel similar, but different. And he wants people to go, oh, I know Catwoman. I know the Riddler. I know the Penguin. I know Batman. I know all of these characters. I've seen them before, but they're done in a different way that we haven't seen before. And, you know, he was mentioning some of his like past um, influences and stuff on this film um, in terms of the Batman films that have come before. He, you know, he praised Tim Burton's Batman, especially Nolan's. Um, I think Nolan's definitely sort of set the benchmark in terms of this more grittier, realistic and just taking Batman seriously, essentially, in, in terms of a modern audience and really sort of making it. What if this character, what if Batman existed in the world today? Uh, and I thought that was very interesting. And then he also mentioned other films that have had an influence on him with this film. And he mentioned the likes of Chinatown, you know, the Jack Nicholson movie, uh, Taxi Driver. And he was listing off a lot of these sort of 70s movies that came out. Um, this is a noir film. This is a this is a crime noir thriller. Uh, it's a murder mystery. And he's he kept, you know, he kept talking about the fact that this is going to show Batman as the world's greatest detective, which he is. And it's a side of Batman that we've never really seen before. We've seen him do little bits of deduction and um, detective work, but never on the scale of what's required as Batman, not outside of the video games or the cartoon series anyway. Um, and he really kept making a point of that, that this is going to be, you know, detective comics like Batman's first appearance. And I think that this probably looks truest in in style and tone to a crime noir film, uh, crime thriller, which is what Batman originally started out as. And, you know, obviously he's changed over the years, but inherently that is who the Batman character is. I think it's an incredibly safe hands. And as I mentioned, I think that Robert Pattinson looks great. I'm probably going to cut to, we need to talk about that scene from the trailer, don't we? This is going to be filled with analysis and speculation. So the people that he's fighting, um, it's very clear to see in the trailer, have white face paint on and they've got a sort of painted smile on their faces. Is this the precursor to the Joker? Are these Joker's goons? I think everyone's mind's probably going to go straight to that. Um, I don't know. I don't have the answers. But if that's the case, I think there are rumors that Joker will event because this is a trilogy. And I think that it is going to be a complete story. Maybe there will be some sort of big year gaps in between. Um, the fact that this is set in Batman's second year of operating in Gotham, if there are multiple years between films then you know we can start to see batman more in his prime as he becomes more refined and hones his skills more and he becomes a bit more wearied and um wiser dare we say in terms of being in gotham but batman just beats down on these guys and this is the brutal batman we wanted to see this is i mean that guy's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life he's going to be eating his meals through a straw for the rest of his life but the important thing is not that we know Although it sounds brutal, Batman didn't kill him. That's a big thing. I don't know whether Batman is going to kill people in this film. Um, I've never really liked that take on Batman. And that's one of my criticisms of um, Ben Affleck's Batman is that I love the warehouse scene. The warehouse fight scene from that film was incredible. That's where we see a brutal Batman, but possibly a step too far brutal Batman where he's actually killing people. And I've never been okay with that. So if this Batman can be restrained, um, then that's absolutely fine. And then we get the voice. We get the, I am vengeance. And I was like, yes, this is what I want. Oh my God, this is brilliant. Now it's one line. Um, I think the Batman voice sounds great. Uh, it kind of sounds uh, like maybe like Christian Bales from Batman Begins before it kind of went off the deep end and it kind of became a parody of itself. Maybe a bit more like Keaton, the sort of whispery, gravelly voice really works for me. And if we get that full line from the animated series, uh, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. That's just going to, oh, that, that, that will make the Batman fan in me very, very happy. Speaking of the animated series, the logo for this thing uh, looks incredible. The red writing, the red distressed writing with the new bat logo on the front of it. I really like that bat logo. It actually looks like a silhouette of a flying bat. Who would have thunk it? But this is my complete collection of the Batman animated series on Blu-ray that came out a couple of years ago. And as soon as I saw this new font that came out for it, it Im immediately reminded me of this. Like, check that out. 
the red right i don't know maybe it's just me that's just what i thought but it's it's a nice little visual link and i asked it's my favorite batman logo probably in terms of the font looks great anyway we have more things to talk about in the trailer so let's go to our main villain of this thing uh that we know of there are a lot of batman villains in the film but our main one and that the trailer is about and based on is the Riddler, played by Paul Dano, who I've only seen in There Will Be Blood. I thought he did a very good performance in that film, and as soon as I saw he was cast, I was like, yep, I can absolutely see that guy as Edward Nigma. Uh, even in There Will Be Blood, he was the very sort of slimy, weasley kind of character. Um, quite a weak character, um, but, you know, he hides behind his ego and his bravado and everything like that. But, you know, when push comes to shove, he's not up to much at all. He, he works with his mind. He's not a physical fighter. He's all about the psychological and um, he's an ego egotist as well. You know, he's egotistical. He wants to prove himself. When do we get our money, Daniel? <laughs> he wants to prove himself the smarter, the most intelligent individual compared to Batman. Bat is, Batman is the only person that can rival him in terms of brain power. And it's this sort of like cat and mouse chase where um, they both kind of rely on each other. It's kind of like a Joker type situation, but in terms of uh, mental prowess. And I thought that's really fascinating. But this is a very different take on the Riddler that we've seen before. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm going to have to see the final film and what they do with it. In the trailer, as we have it at the moment, he's sort of um, masked up. He's in this big sort of like green Parker jacket uh, with a voice that actually sounds a lot like Bane to me. This very sort of distorted speaking through a mask. Justice. Please do not lie. And I've actually written down everything that the, as I mentioned, there are going to be some analytical elements to this. I've written down everything that the Riddler says in the film. I was trying to pick it to pieces. I'm not very good with riddles, though, so maybe I'm not the best guy to talk about it. Um, but, you know, at the beginning, there's a crime scene. First off, we need to talk about who is in that crime scene. We see a person that's, you know, taped all up around... Uh, he's got tape all over his face and kind of like um, saran wrap kind of thing all over his face um, with lies written over him. And that's a big, big focal point of the first part of this trailer. We need to remember as well that only 30 percent of this film has been completed at this point. So there's there's more than half, well more than half that we haven't seen yet. So I thought it was um, very admirable that they managed to get a trailer out as good as they have and as complete as they have based on the amount of footage they have at the moment. Um, and we have a dead body and around the crime scene, um, you know, Batman's working with Commissioner Gordon in this. Um, and I love that, that he's present at the crime scene and he's, you know, he's helping them. Um, that's classic Batman to me. Um, and there's various newspaper clippings on the wall that we see. I managed to take it. It's very blurry in the background, but I managed to take down some of the headlines. So you've got um, Don's done it again. Uh, the bottom left looked like there was one that said carry on Don. There's one that says King Don. Um, and then later on, we see Moroni drug bust. So, um, you know, that's clearly Salvatore Moroni. Whether, you know, one of the um, the crime families, you know, like Falcone and Moroni are sort of like the two, one of the two warring families, essentially, in terms of the Gotham crime gang. And we know that Carmine Falcone is in this film, played by John Turturro. I'm, I know that the guy can do serious roles as well. He's mostly from co comedic films, and that's where I've seen him from. But I know that he can do serious, and I am really looking forward to seeing what he can do with the character of Carmine Falcone. Now, Don, I'm assuming it's sort of, you know, like a crime Don. You think of Godfather and you think of that. So are all those newspaper clippings where Maroney was... You know, he, he was in sort of like the public limelight. He was known by a lot of people. Maybe he was even respected. And in be the behind the scenes, he was doing all of this dodgy shit, uh, you know, like drugs and everything like that. And then there's also the Moroni drug bust. And it looks like the Riddler's written something on that particular newspaper clipping at the bottom. But I can't exactly see what it says. I think that's probably the body of... Um, of Maroney. In that, we see a portrait, like a family portrait kind of thing in the background, a self-portrait of him, and it looks like the same guy in the headlines. So my guess is that that's going to be the death of Maroney, uh, and the Riddler's left all of these clues and everything like that for Batman, uh, specifically Batman, but the police to go on a chase, and he's left his first clue there, which part of it's cut off, but I've kind of sort of added in words to see what it might say. What does a liar do when he is dead? Haven't a clue. Let's play a game, just me and you, referring to um, 
Batman, the Riddler and Batman. And then there's some kind of code or cipher at the bottom, which, you know, I'm, I'm not able to deduce. I'm not that brainy. So that's very interesting. And what it seems like the, the theme is, um, and the closing line of the Riddler in the trailer too, he says, if you are justice, please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? And then, um, you know, it kind of sounds like there's more to Batman, more to Batman's history. And actually reading the plot synopsis, there's only like a sentence plot synopsis, but it says in his second year of fighting crime, Batman explores the corruption that plagues Gotham City, as well as how it may tie to his own family. So uh, the way that I'm reading this is that the Riddler probably knows about Batman's past, about the Waynes, and maybe they're not so great as people think, you know, they're kind of, in other Batman media, they're kind of held up as these, you know, very rich elitists, but they're very nice, you know, they do a lot for charity, and they're very giving, they're very nice people, they're good people, and then unfortunately one night they're killed. That was kind of turned on its head a little bit when we get to Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, where, you know, there was a lot of stuff to do with Thomas Wayne, where maybe he wasn't such a nice guy, but obviously that's being told from an unreliable narrator is the Joker. We don't really know what to believe. Um, there was talk, you know, that he had a child out of wedlock and he was very neglectful to them. And he was very much himself and selfish and everything like that wrapped up in his little world. Um, and I kind of like that take. It was a different take that I hadn't seen done on Thomas Wayne before. So maybe this film's going in that way in that maybe Bruce Wayne's parents weren't the shining example of good people in Gotham. Maybe they were doing a lot of dodgy dealings. And if it's like Maroney, where Maroney was, you know, probably well-respected, he had the right people paid off and everything like that, but he was doing some dodgy stuff in the background, kind of mirrors Batman as well in some way, in that, you know, what Batman's doing, he seems to be right. He's, you know, he's trying to protect the innocent. He's fighting crime. But on the surface, he's this, you know, billionaire playboy, we haven't really seen that side to him yet, though, in the trailer, but I'm sure it'll be in there. He's this billionaire playboy by day. And, you know, he puts on that image, that very fake image. And then at nighttime, you could argue he becomes his true self of the Batman, you know, just annihilating criminals, just punching them into a pulp and everything like that. Um so it, it's interesting. So maybe he's referring to that in terms of lies. Like if if you if you are justice, don't lie. Why should you lie to people? And I think that's very interesting. As I mentioned, the Riddler, the voice thing. I'm not sure what's going on with that. It kind of sounds like Bane a little bit, maybe. Um, or maybe I think it's probably just like a voice modulator to hide his true identity. And we have seen that before with the Riddler in things like Batman Arkham Origins. I know when he first comes onto the scene. Um, it's sort of on a static um, TV screen and his voice distorted and is masking his identity. As the games progress and he becomes more egotistical, he becomes more sure of himself, then he's quite happy to just show himself off to the world, essentially. But I get the impression that, and I think Matt Reeves has said this as well, because it's set very early on in Batman's career, we are seeing a lot of these villains who we know will be, you know, like Selina Kyle, who will eventually become Catwoman, and Oswald Cobblepot, that will eventually become the Penguin. We're seeing a lot of these villains in their earlier stages, very sort of similar to the TV series Gotham, in that we see their rise to becoming the villains that we all know from Batman's Rogue Gallery. Uh, we see Zoe Kravitz in this very, very briefly as Selina Kyle. Uh, we see her cracking a safe, classic cat burglar. She's in some kind of balaclava. But there is a homage there to the ears on top of the mask, which I thought was really nice. Uh, we don't really see much of her. Maybe they haven't filmed all of her scenes yet. As I mentioned, there's a lot that they still need to film. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see her start out. It seems like the film's dealing with a lot of characters. That's what I've noticed. It's dealing with, you know, all of these side characters and you've got to set people up. And true that you have got a trilogy. It's going to be very easier to sort of grow those characters and develop those characters across three films um so i'm sure at this point she is going to remain selena but there's going to be those clues there as to where it could lead to and i wanted to talk about the penguin as well this is colin farrell who is absolutely unrecognizable in this role the makeup team did such a good job on this character he looks like oswald cobblepot he looks like the penguin he's got the big sort of um, fat suit and the the jowly face and sort of like the big more pronounced nose and everything he looks a lot like the um the arkham games penguin where he is sort of you know a crime boss um you know where he is sort of like a dodgy crime mob boss 
type situation. And again, that's another character like Batman, if it's going with this lies thing where this is the character of the Penguin. I don't know if this is all going to be in the movie. It looks like he's doing, you know, like dodgy dealings and stuff in, in various industrial estates and probably arms deals and drug deals and everything like that. But by day, the Penguin uh, runs the Iceberg Lounge and is a very wealthy man. He was one of the um, the other sort of, not rival, but prominent rich families, rich elitists in Gotham. You had the Waynes and you had the Cobblepots. So if they go with that angle again, that could tie into the theme of um, people wearing masks and putting on faces and not really showing their true colours and their true selves. And I really kind of like that angle to it as well. It's a nice theme if that's the case in that it is tying into Batman being very early on because he's two years into his career, but he's still finding himself. You know, it's even we see that in the costume. Uh, one of my favorite shots is where Batman's approaching the crime scene, and I can't tell if it's some kind of tripwire or if it's been taped off by the cops or if it's just how the light's reflected, but we see Batman's boots approaching at the crime scene, and it doesn't look like his full massive tech suit that he has that you get in one of the Arkham games or whatnot, or even sort of the, the military um, tactical suit that Christian Bale had in his films. It looks like a guy that's just kind of hodgepodge this costume together. And the boots just look like any kind of military boot that you could buy from any kind of clothing store. And I really like that if he's just sort of, you know, he's a, he's a self-made man in terms of making all this Batman stuff. It's, it's quite interesting. And I like that take on it. The one thing I'm not keen on, though, is the cowl. I do think the cowl looks kind of out of place. It maybe it looks too small for his face or something. This is me really nitpicking, but I do think the look of the character is important. And I'm not sold on the mask at the moment. Maybe when I see the film, I can put that to the wayside. Um, and maybe as the trilogy goes on, we will see the suit progress. If this is Batman very early on, maybe this is all he can sort of put together at the moment. Even the Batmobile, and Matt Reeves mentioned this, the Batmobile is a car in this that looks like some guy who, who's a mechanic who knows how to mod cars could theoretically put this together themselves. It looks like they've taken some kind of like old muscle car, ripped the engine out, put like a new turbo engine in there or something. You know, maybe it's got some kind of gadgets on it too and gizmos, but it looks it's going with that more grounded tone that street level tone which is absolutely needed for a batman film in my opinion uh it's a nice homage and it's a nice progression away from the the nolan things i do think nolan's had a big influence with these films in terms of how visually they look and this sort of more mature a tone to them but i think that this is i don't know what the budget for this thing is i should probably check that out if it's been revealed no so the budget hasn't been released and there's probably are going to be some like massive spectacle parts in terms of, you know, fighting and car chases and all the things that you expect from a Batman film. But from this trailer, it looks like a more stripped back and raw. And as I mentioned, like a noir take on it. And I absolutely love that. Fundamentally, it's just a murder mystery. It's the Riddler killing all of these people, leaving a message for Batman, leaving a string of clues. It almost looks like a, um, a David Fincher movie. It looks like Seven or something like that. This really sort of grimy, horrible, sleazy looking film. And that's great. That's what I want. The, the texture of the film and how it looks and how Gotham makes you feel. Gotham, I've always said this, Gotham should be a character in its own right. And if you can get Gotham right, which it looks like this film has, very much looking forward to seeing what can be done with this thing. Um, I could analyze this some more. The only other thing that I've seen is we get a look at Bruce Wayne. And it looks like he's at some kind of funeral. Um, there is a portrait of the person whose funeral it is. I don't know who that is. I was trying to check through the cast list. I couldn't see who that was. Maybe it's just some kind of um, like policeman or like district attorney or something like that. Maybe that could make the way for Harvey Dent to be in these films if someone's going to take his place. And then we see this car sort of uh, career through the crowd at this funeral and crash into the wall. And we see a guy who looks like he's been, you know, put into that car against his will. He didn't want to be in there. His his mouth's taped up, I believe, or he's got um, another note from the Riddler and a sort of cassette tape strapped to his hand. It kind of looks like Jigsaw from Saw or something where he's leaving cassette, you know, little tapes of messages for people. And then later on, we see Batman go back to the same location. I'm going to have clips on screen now for everyone watching at home. Um 
you've got a um, Batman going back to that same scene and it looks like, you know, the car's still been left there for some reason and then it blows up, but the car doesn't blow up. It's something um, on the floor. It looks like something maybe on a chair or maybe it's something within the note or maybe it's the cassette player itself. You know, maybe it's like a uh, mission impossible situation. This message will self-destruct in five minutes, in five seconds or something. There is something written on the car too, clearly like a message from the Riddler. I believe it says um, DOA, dead or alive. So I don't know. This trailer's, as I said, I don't usually analyze trailers like this, but I absolutely had to. I feel, as I mentioned, I feel bad that it's not a reaction video. These are just sort of my stream of thoughts. I'll be talking about this trailer again later on today, probably not as in-depth as this. Uh, when we do our live stream on the DC fandom, but that'll do it for my thoughts on the Batman. My final thoughts, I am absolutely out of my mind for this film already, and it doesn't come out until October next year. I've got over a year to wait for this film, and I've I, you know, i watched this trailer to death already. I love the song Something in the Way by Nirvana. Very, very effective. If Hey, if you want a dark and brooding movie, you best believe you've got to use a grungy Nirvana song, right? Uh, what I've seen from the performances, we get a voiceover from Andy Serkis in there as Alfred, but we don't see him in the trailer. There's a lot to like about this. And I guess the last thing I'll say in terms of the similar but different, I love that all the villains they're using so far, and maybe this will change when we get into movie two and movie three, are all sort of going back to like the 60s villains that people know. You know, you've got Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler. That's three of the big four in terms of the villains that they used in the 60s. So I really like that, that they're going back to those classic villains, you know, and um, offering a different spin on it. I think especially Riddler is definitely overdue for an update. I'd even say Penguin as well. I love the Danny DeVito Penguin so much, but it would be nice to sort of get a different take in terms of a big screen Penguin as well. Um, I think that's very important. So I can't get enough of this. I love me some Batman, as people know. And this could be, hopefully, um, maybe, I don't know. I can't say at this stage, it's very early days, maybe the best live action depiction and realization of Batman we've ever seen. Maybe. And I know that's high praise. I know what Nolan did with Batman Begins in the Dark Knight was absolutely incredible. What Tim Burton did back in the day as well for the 80s revitalizing it. But in terms of off the page, off the graphic novel, off the comic book, this is looking good. And I do love me some Matt Reeves. So that'll do it for my, it's not even a reaction, discussion, analysis. As I mentioned, please do comment below and let me know what you think of this trailer and the Batman and what you've seen from it, the casting, anything related to this film. Um, how do you think it compares from the, the very brief clips that we've seen, the very brief moments of Batman, uh, your favorite moments from the trailer? Anything related to this film, please do let me know because I would like to get a conversation going with you guys in the comments down below about this. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to have much more news coming out about DC later on today, and I'm sure we will be talking about all this later on. Uh, all the links are in the description, but you can find us on Facebook, Cinema Savvy, as I mentioned, Twitter at Cinema underscore Savvy, and Instagram at Cinema underscore Savvy too. That'll do it for me. I'm about to do some more videos on the new Wonder Woman trailer and the Justice League Snyder Cut trailer as well. So um, lots more still to come. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.